Well, I'm Ephraim Radner from Wycliffe College at the University of Toronto, where I teach theology. I have the honor this year of giving the Nicholson Lectures at the Atlantic School of Theology on Tuesday and Thursday, October 10th and 12th. The Nicholson Lectures are traditionally devoted to discussing matters touching upon ecumenism, that is to say, on the relationship of separated or distinct churches. And this year, I'm going to be talking about the experience of Christian division and how we might navigate that experience. Now, Christian division is no longer, and thank goodness, something that results in persecution and violence as it has been in the past. And in fact, separated churches in our day often cooperate on a host of levels. Still, real division remains, often within churches rather than among them, fueled by vying disagreements about uh, theology and morals and politics and so on amongst members. And then by the jurisdictional responses, for instance, that might take place in response to such disagreements, who are leaving churches all the time, every day for other churches or for starting new churches or new Christian groups or their redirecting or withdrawing their financial support. And there's really being involved in many recriminating debates, which leave in their wake a good deal of bitterness and anger. Furthermore, the failure among Christians to see things in the same way and get on the same page in the face of deep human existential problems like war and hunger and so on, um, often inflates the destructive power of such problems. So Christian division remains a real problem with some very negative effects. In my talks, I'm not going to be focusing on how to solve Christian division. Instead, I want to reflect first on the disappointment that Christians feel with their churches in the face of their disunity and on the effects of such disappointment. By and large, I will argue that disappointment with our churches ironically fuels further division. But how do we deal with such inevitable disappointment? This isn't just a psychological issue. It is far more a profound theological one. So here I'm going to move on in the second talk to examine what it means to know only a little, to know only partially, in this case, to know only partially who God is and what God is up to. And I'm going to amend a way of looking at the work of the Holy Spirit in particular that is grounded on what I call partial knowledge rather than on full knowledge. It is, I will suggest, a misplaced hope in having full knowledge that is one of the main motors of division. We cannot know everything. We cannot have it all. But it's also the faithful receipt of and response to partial knowledge of God that permits the joyful navigation of Christian failure, including especially the failure that is our disunity. Ultimately, I'm going to argue that following Jesus is a matter of a kind of trusting ignorance for God. It is also filled with the actual being of God's life with us and shared with us. It's a paradox, perhaps, but it's also a profoundly satisfying one. God does not wish to consign us to the bitterness of our separations. Rather, God wants and calls us to the bearing of their burdens joined to the creative life and power of Jesus. I hope you will have a chance to join me in this discussion, and I look forward to it.